Have you ever asked anyone to help you understand what inflation is? Chances are you would have heard an example something like this. A cup of coffee cost rupees 25 3 years ago and the same cup of coffee today costs 40 rupees. Over the last 3 years, the purchasing power of money has diminished and this is generally attributed to a phenomena called inflation. This definition of inflation is all right. In a nutshell, it helps you understand what inflation is. But you as an active market participant, an active trader and an investor should try and understand what inflation is and understand all the nuances around it. So in this video, let's try and understand what inflation is and ways in which the central bank and the government control inflation. Imagine there's a person who wants to buy a box of chocolate and there's another person willing to sell this box of chocolate. Now, all else equal, with no external forces acting on this transaction, the demand matches the supply and therefore this transaction will go through. Here, there is no incentive for the seller to increase the price of the box of chocolates. Now, let's try and flip the situation. Instead of one buyer, let's assume there are 10 buyers willing to buy the same box of chocolates and there is only one seller of this box of chocolate or maybe a very small group of sellers. Now, what do you think is likely to happen? Of course, there's an incentive for the sellers to increase the price of box of chocolate because they would want to maximize on the opportunity. Hence, the price of the box of chocolate is likely to increase. Of course, the assumption here is that all 10 buyers have the actual money to buy the box of chocolate and it's not a fake expression of interest. So if you strip the situation to its basics, you will realize that whenever there is an excess demand, the prices always tend to increase because the sellers of these goods or services would want to maximize on the opportunity. But the key here is to identify that the demand itself is fueled by something called as liquidity, which in other words is the availability of funds. Whenever such a situation pans out in the economy as a whole, where the demand for goods and services tend to increase and the increase is actually backed by the availability of cash, then it is referred to as liquidity-led inflation. Whenever inflation increases due to excess availability of liquidity in the system, the central bank, in our case the Reserve Bank of India, steps in to control the inflation because excess inflation is neither good for the public or the economy. But the bigger question to ask is, what really leads to a liquidity-led inflation in the very first place? Let's take a recent example to understand this. Rewind back to 2020 when COVID hit the entire world. The public suffered, businesses suffered and people lost jobs. And people in general were afraid to spend money because of all the uncertainties that prevailed. Liquidity was tight. Central banks around the world wanted to inject money into their respective economies so that they could keep their economies floating. Now, how do central banks inject liquidity into the system? Well, one of the easiest way for them to inject liquidity into the system is by controlling the repo and the reverse repo rates. If you're not familiar with what repo and reverse repo rates are, I would encourage you to read this chapter on Varsity for a quick understanding. When the repo and reverse repo rates are low, banks generally have access to cheaper capital, which they can borrow from the central bank and then in turn lend this at lower rates to the public. The public can then borrow funds at lower rates from the bank and then fuel their purchases like automobiles and homes. Not just that, businesses too can borrow funds at lower rates and can fuel their capital expenditure programs. In turn, all these expenditures, both from the public and the businesses side, fuel the economy and helps the economy from not sinking. So by lowering the rate, central bank ensures that they don't let the economy from sinking and they also inject liquidity into the system. Apart from lowering the monetary rates, central banks also participate in open market operations to inject liquidity into the system. Open market operations or the OMO and the Government Security Acquisition Program, also called the GSAP, are two central bank initiatives using which central bank infuses liquidity into the economy. The central bank's open market operation is something that you need to understand. 
let me explain like an individual the country too has an income and also has a set of expenses income is mainly in the form of tax collections and the expense is mainly towards infrastructure and various government initiatives if the income matches the expense then it's all good but it seldom does as in the case of most economies the expenses exceeds the income and in economic terms when the expenses exceed the income it's called a fiscal deficit now to fund the fiscal deficit the central bank issues something called as the government bonds where they borrow money from the public and fund the deficit when the liquidity gets tight central bank steps in and via their open market operation they start buying back these bonds from the bank prematurely which implies that the banks are now flushed with liquidity banks use this liquidity to lend money and pass on the liquidity to downstream economy by the way the open market purchase of securities with an intent to flush the system with liquidity is also called as quantitative easing or the qe most people think qe is about printing money it is not to sum it central bank inject liquidity into the system by lowering interest rates and also via their open market operations but then excess liquidity for a prolonged period comes with a baggage demand for goods and services go up and as i explained earlier demand fueled by liquidity leads to inflation now when inflation increases the central banks will again have to step in and use the same levers that is the reverse repo repo and open market operations to control inflation and suck all the excess liquidity from the system apart from tweaking the repo reverse repo and the open market operations the central bank also tweaks something called as the crr or the cash reserve ratio i've explained what crr is in this chapter of varsity i would suggest you give it a read all that we've discussed so far is a liquidity led inflation mainly stemming from the demand side but remember at the start of this video i did mention that inflation is a function of both demand and supply imbalances let's quickly look at the supply side and how it impacts inflation going back when covid hit us the global supply chain was disrupted there was a shortage of everything which means the commodity prices increased countries producing commodities holded all these commodities hoping to release these commodities at a much higher price you see what's happening here right with shortage of commodities with the shortage of supply the price tends to increase and that leads to inflation as well and this is ongoing as we speak the russia ukraine war still has a impact on all the commodities especially oil now when oil prices increase it has a ripple effect on the entire economy including the inflation to sum it up the demand side inflation can be controlled by the central bank policies whereas the supply side inflation can be controlled by government policies to control the supply side inflation the government has to step in and take up a series of steps like lowering the duties to make essential commodities more affordable imposing curbs on export so that commodities are available in domestic markets by the way before i end this video here is how you can keep track of all the important policy rates in the economy so as you see inflation has two sides to it and you as a market participant will have to keep an eye on all these factors and figure how things are panning out in the economy only then will you be in a position to anticipate things in advance and set up better trades i'll see you guys in the next video